Hello and welcome to the Cyrus Lowdown. Now, if there's one thing we promise you on the Cyrus Lowdown, it is smoking guests. And you don't get more smoking than this week's guest, Pippa Bennett Water, one of the stars of Sky One's hit drama, The Smoke. Pippa, welcome to the Cyrus Lowdown. Hello. How are you doing, Pippa? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am very good. Very honoured to be in your presence today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> likewise, likewise. Um, just before we start, I just want to say to you guys watching at home or on the beach or in wherever you're watching the interview from, um, if you have a question for Pippa, you can ask her by clicking on the Q&A tab, which is in the bottom right-hand corner. Click on that. The question will pop up on my little screen, and I will ask Pippa if she's if she's okay with that. Yeah. She's A-OK. She's A-OK. She's, she's, she's red nail varnish, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly doing that. Um, <laughs> Now, we need to start with The Smoke, Pippa. Okay. That show has got more twists and turns than Fort Park. I mean, like, episode seven. Yes. I, 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 I don't even know how you filmed it. It was so dramatic. I mean, can you, I mean obviously, it's, it's the season finale tonight. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I'm presuming that Trish is no longer with us. My I mean, lips are sealed on that, on that yeah. part of it. You know, I I can hear um, outside, uh, you know, outside Kev's hospital room, and but it's just, I mean, can you give us any kind of little morsels or any anything that might happen tonight? Um, well, I think the only thing I will say is that everything's left quite open. So if there was a season two, it would it would you know work quite well. But also, I think a few things that needed to get resolved get resolved in episode eight. Um, and but I still feel as well that like you're still learning about the other characters, like the you know the kind of the white watch that you're still learning more about them, which is actually really exciting because it just leaves everything wide open, which is cool. Good, good, good. And you've um you've just uh, talked about white watch. For anyone who's been buried under a rock and hasn't seen the show, could you just, yeah. just describe what the smoke is about briefly? Yeah, it's it's set in um, Myland. We are the Myland. Uh, it's about firefighters. Essentially, first of all, it's about firefighters, and we are the Mile End White Watch, uh, which is um, yeah, we're, it's, we're set in we're set in, in Mile End in East London, and it basically follows the trials and tribulations of our governor, who was played by Jamie Brown Burke, called Kev, who has been through a horrific. We did a shout at the beginning of um, the season, which um, left him mentally and physically scarred. Um, and it basically just follows his kind of journey on going back to work and his involvement with his girlfriend and his best friend and the rest of us kind of just, it's, it's quite ensemble based, but it, it is sort of Jamie's story following his story. Um, I must say, when I watched um, uh, <laughs> the end of episode seven and I saw him being put into the ambulance, I did think, that guy's been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, I know, I know. He really has. He really has. Season two, he just needs a dog, and he needs <laughs> he needs a hobby. He does, does it? it? Really does. Yeah. It really, really does. Um, but we're not here to talk about um Jamie. We're here to talk about you, and you play a character called Ziggy. Could you tell? I my character Ziggy Sigourney, her real name is Sigourney, but Ziggy for short, is the only female firefighter on the watch, um, incredibly protective, quite maternal towards the rest of the guys. Um, and she uh, has been keeping a secret, she's kept a secret until about episode four, and she's actually got two little twins, which she had when she was very young, and a husband. And she's very keen to kind of not, at the beginning of the season, uh, very keen not to kind of, um, to not be one of the boys. She wants to, she loves being one of the boys. She loves kind of just, you know, running around with them fighting fires, no makeup, that kind of stuff. But as soon as she kind of gets, she doesn't want to get labelled as a mum and as a girl, I think, and a woman in, in many respects. So she's awesome, though. She's kind of like kick ass. Do you know what I mean? Really she's cool. great. She's great. I mean, I presume it's her awesomeness and her kind of kick assness um, that attracted you to her. What, what else made you want to, want to play this character? Well, I. I did, the, the, Jodie said a really amazing thing, and I completely agree with her, that when you're reading, when I was reading the script, it didn't, I had, and, and if you, I mean, if you'd read, if you're reading scripts and you covered the characters' names, you didn't know if you were reading a man or a woman. Ah. Sometimes you read stuff, and you know, you're the girlfriend, or you're the wife, or you're the sister, or whatever, and this was so kind of just, um, 
this was so normal in the sense that it was just it could have been from anybody's voice. I think that was what really attracted me to her because mm. she's she's also this, she's this force of nature. She's the only girl in the world, so she's she's tough as nails, but she's incredibly vulnerable. And you know, I just I get very attached to people I'm playing, and she was just it, automatically. I just knew that I knew that I wanted to do it. And she felt she was very rounded. I think often when you watch these dramas where the focus is on one particular person, the yes. the ensemble can feel a little bit like they're just there yeah. to fill a purpose. But she, yeah. she definitely feels um, she she feels complete. <laughs> good, good. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and one of the things I do love about the smoke is um, you'll be in these dark, dark moments, and then this bit of humour will come through. And I and I think and I and also I imagine that's how firefighters have to live their lives. They can't take every you know fire home of them yeah no absolutely I think the show really benefits from um, Jared and Dave little Al and Rob mm. I think in those really kind of yeah like you said in those dark moments you need the comic relief and they yeah. do it so beautifully and it was like they never met each other they'd never worked together but they were just this amazing kind of like comedy duo we were all just like wow open mouths and set watching them just kind of like flying with the material they were absolutely brilliant and they, you totally need them in the show but you're giving your comedy thing as well, though. You know, you get you give, you give me, you're giving your little one-liners. <laughs> I haven't missed those. <laughs> I'm trying. I try. I think, I think Jermaine Greer was my favourite. Oh, Jermaine, Jermaine Greer. That, that has been my actually my season one favourite. What will be my season two favourite? Who knows? Um, what have I, have I asked you? What attracted you? I have asked you that. I'm getting I'm getting confused on my questions. Um, uh, so the next question isn't from me, so I won't get confused. It's from Sarita Radia. Hello, Sarita, from Twitter, Twitter Sphere. And she wants to know, Pippa, what has been your favourite scene so far? I'm going to split her question into two. Favourite scene that you were in and okay. favourite scene that you've watched. Okay. My favourite scene that I was in was episode seven when I'm trying to resuscitate Dom. David in Dawson. The I sort of that was kind of I think that was my favourite moment to film and it was horrific because I had water being you know in in my, in my face and I was trying not to hurt David and, but trying to make it look as convincing as possible so I think that was my favourite but also quite it was quite intense but that was my favourite and then what was your question? Um, your favourite scene to watch. My favourite scene to watch. You can say the same scene if you want. <laughs> I, I I am in the scene, but I don't say anything. But I think one of my favourite scenes is episode five, where um, we don't want to give Rashan's character the blanket, and then Jamie just comes out and he's like, "I loved you." That was just like I was like, and I remember watching it and just being like, "Shh, that's so powerful and kind of yeah, yeah, yeah." So yeah. needed at that moment. Lucy just judges the moment so well and it's... No, the writing's amazing. And, uh, yeah, and I, I remember that scene. Between, you know the scene where you were trying to resuscitate Dom? Yeah. Obviously, I was invested in the moment and the drama and the yeah. water. But yeah. all I... I was just worried about your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... So much, you know, but, but you know, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's my mo my mother coming through. <laughs> well, well, actually, my hair's an interesting story because when I first got the job, I had hair to about here. Hmm. And um, it was natural, so curly. And then I remember Neve, who was our ma amazing makeup designer, she was like, we're cutting it, cutting it short, and we're relaxing it, so like chemically straightening it. And um, I remember that day, I think I was nearly due a new relaxer, but I couldn't get one because we were so near towards the end of the job, so there's no point really. Mm. And I was thinking the whole time, I was like, oh no, my hair's going to look rubbish because there's so much water on it. Um, and I was really, because I had a really big butt undercut, like he like, really like buzzed under, and I was like, oh no, it's going to look bald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, glad I had the same worry. Sorry. No, I had I had the same worry from from a from a historical point of view, but watching it, I wasn't I didn't um I wasn't distracted by your hair your hair at all. Um, now obviously I you know I just I wonder why you took the job, and I wonder what attracted you to the job. You know what attracted you to a job where you got to spend all day every day with a group of men wearing firemen's uniforms, pretending to be firemen. I mean, what was it about that 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 made you go, this is the job for me? God, I really don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that's a serious I question. Can't <laughs> in the world. <laughs> How was it wearing the uniform? Did you? Um, I mean, I presume yours was smaller, but I presume you had all the same stuff as the men had. Exactly the same stuff. Yes, mine was a little bit smaller, but 
it's incredibly heavy. And I remember the, the, the real firefighters on set who helped us with all of the kind of shouts and stuff, essentially. They were like, um, you're going to get really, really hot. You're going to get really, really hot. And you would. You'd come out, you'd take your BA off after each take. You'd be dripping with sweat. And you're wearing uh, thermal leggings underneath the, what well, we call them leggings, but, you know, the kind of the, um, what do you call them, kind of like dungaree type thing. Yeah. 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 They're called leggings. So we'd have thermals under that. The boys would wear shorts, but my boots were up, so I had to wear leggings. And then um, you'd have the leggings and your T-shirt and then your, your tunic, which was just so, I mean, it was so having the boots. Like, I remember just the first time I put the boots on, I literally had to, it was like, oh, I can't walk. My feet are so got really used to it. It was six months. So you just, you know, by the end of the first month, you totally adapted to being a, a firefighter. And also, imagine just in terms of having to play the character. I suppose once that uniform's on, it's yeah. done half the work for you. Yeah, exactly. You just kind of had to get on with it. Mm. So, um, obviously, I'm loving Ziggy, and I want to know more about Ziggy. And I know that people at home want to know more about Ziggy. And I, I, people, I want to make sure you've done your homework. You know, you're a you're a rather trained actress. I know you. You know, I know you. You know, you're doing character studies and all that, all that stuff. And what's her animal? <laughs> <laughs> Lioness. What's her element? <laughs> well, oh God, um, bit of fire, maybe. A bit of, a bit of fire, a bit of water. Um, yeah. No, those those weren't the questions I was going to ask you. So I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions about Ziggy. Okay. Um, don't you know? I don't you thinking. I just want you to whatever comes off the top of your head. All right. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Uh, favorite drink on a night out. Yay, yeah, bum. Favorite color. Blue. Favorite type of fire. Kitchen fire. A kitchen fire. Okay, okay. Um, favorite ready meal. Bangers and mash. Favorite song at the moment. <sighs> Drunk and love. Ah, she's a Beyonce. She's a Beyonce fan. Yeah. And a bit of snog, marry, avoid with Oop. white watch. Okay. I would snog. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I think it's Snog Mal. Snog Mal. Yeah. Marry Kev. Marry Kev. And oh, and avoid Asbo. Avoid Asbo. I love Aaron, but I would probably his character. I would avoid Asbo. Yeah. He, I mean, him. he's intense. <laughs> he's an intense guy. Yeah. He is, isn't he? He's, yeah. I love Taron. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he's a, he's a lovely guy, but he's um his character. Yeah, his character. Intense. Bless him. He's been through it this season. Yeah, you would um you'd, you'd cross the road on a dark night, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I think you would. Yeah, I think you would. Yeah. Um, thank you. That was great. Thank you for those answers. I hope that's pleased some people at home. Um, now obviously I did my research on you, and I spent hours googling, and I was in the library looking at old things that you look at in the library, and one of the things that I discovered. Yes. Was that at the age of fifteen. Yeah. You had the opportunity to have a recording contract, but your parents wanted you to focus on your studies. That's right, yeah. Now, as admirable, admirable I can't speak, as admirable as that was, yes. Pippa, you could have been Beyonce. Like, people, no, 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 you laugh, you laugh. But you know those T-shirts? People could be wearing T-shirts saying, always be yourself unless you can be Pippa, dot, 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 then be Pippa. Like, that, you could have had those T-shirts. How do you feel about that? Well, I just feel like I missed a really big opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I would have been I, I think I would have been a rubbish pop star. Why? I don't know. I just think that I'd have been really shit. Um I remember I remember when that all came around actually and and uh, I didn't know about it until after that my parents had kind of opted out for me. Oh so, okay. thanks, guys. Cheers for that. But um no, I just think I would have been bad. You need to, I think you need to be so disciplined and I think um, you know, you couldn't kind of you'd have your life would just be about singing, and I don't think I would have had the, my chords would have been strong enough to do those big arenas or whatever they were planning. I don't know, but I yeah, no, I think I would have. Um, I don't think I would have been very good. And did you, did you think acting kind of um, became a bigger passion for you? Yeah, I think it did. I think it was at that age actually when I was about fifteen. When I started doing. Uh, drama at school and stuff. I think that it was it was um, the GCSE. I think that was when it kind of. I mean, I, I think I always wanted to do it from when I was little. Mm. But, you were in the Lion King, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. But I think it. But I think um, it was it was 
from yeah, from probably around that time where I was like, no, I just want to do the straight stuff. Way easier. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I just say my lines. I've got to do. I go home. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, when I think of you, Pippa, and I'm sure people watching this interview now will think it as well. Um, I think of class, intelligence, sophistication. So I was quite shocked when I did my research yeah. and I discovered that two of your favourite programmes are Made in Chelsea and Keeping Up with Kanye West's Wife's Family. What's that about? Guilty as charged. I love it. I mean, I love it. I think it's. I think I got that from my sister because my sister's a bit of a telly nut. Mm. Um, we kind of got into Keeping Up with Kardashians years ago. And then M I C Made in Chelsea... One of the boys in it I went to school with, so I kind of just like to watch it to kind of see what he... Which did. one? Andy Jordan. Andy Jordan, okay. Yeah, we used to sing together at school. Ah. Bit of, uh, yeah. But he, so I just, I, you know, I, sometimes I quite like to watch it, and also I find it quite funny, because it's obviously, well, they say it's not scripted, or is it scripted? I don't know, so kind of... I mean, I, I tried to watch, I watched about two minutes of Towie, and yeah. I, 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 don't, I just don't think I get it. No, I don't get. I, I, I don't watch Towie, I must say. I, I do like it. MIC. I I because don't get me wrong. I like my reality TV. I like my Big Brother. Um, but I know what that is. I saw your tweets about bits of celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, we're going to move on now to um, we're running out of time um. <laughs> my next guest is in the wings um, you're going to talk about your theatre career now yes and you've been at the National, you've been at the Donmar you've mm -hmm. been at the Royal Court what has been your favourite theatre job so far I have two um, you, as long as they're not in the same venue you can have okay. um, I think my first favourite was King Lear at the Donmar yeah um, which was amazing, and then my second was The Witness at the Royal Court. Okay. Two favourites, I think. And were they very different? Uh, so, di so different, but in a weird way, there was a little bit of Cordelia in the character in The Witness, this sort of strong, defiant young girl who kind of, you know, s stands up for what she believes in. Mm. And who's been your favourite director? Without you, you, you can have two if you um, if you're concerned about future work, you can have as many as you want. All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> for very different reasons. Yeah. I love them all. I can't answer that. I don't think. I like honestly. I I, like, I really enjoyed working with every director I've worked with. What what um what skill do you love in a good director? I like it when a director can get something out of me that I didn't realise I had inside me. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. What's been your most most challenging role, whether that be on screen or, or or on stage? I think the witness actually at the Royal Court because it was a three hander. The first it was two in two halves, but the first half was kind of a two hander with me and Danny Webb, and then um, David Ajala joined us for the second half. And there was sort of eighteen scenes, and it was I was on every scene, and I had like three second um, costume changes and things, and so many lines to learn. And I think. That was the most challenging, but the most enjoyable. And so yeah, I think I definitely think that one. I've spoken to actors in the past, and they've said that actually sometimes um, when you have more to do, you have less time to procrastinate. So you yes. just get on with it, and you just end up doing. You get on. With it. You get on with it. You've got one little bit. You have to get that right. There's so much pressure to get that right. But yeah, I think in some ways it is easier. Yeah, to do to have a bigger part. And do you prefer stage or screen? Do you have a preference? Or are you doing? I know you're doing bits of radio now. Is that is always yeah. that something that's radio? Radio is great. I like it all, but I think um, everything. Each medium requires a different um, uh, discipline and stuff. Mm. I think stage is great because you get to play. You get to go on that journey every night, every afternoon when you have matinee. Film is also great because you get to kind of. It, it's much more here. Mm. Um, but you'll never, you never really shoot in sequence. That can be quite difficult. But I think they both, I think they all have, you know, pros and cons. And is it stage or screen next? I have mostly yeah. screen, but I don't know how much. I can't really talk about. I can, I can say talk about Doctor Who. I've just done Doctor Who, which is quite exciting. With, oh, with Peter, with Peter Capaldi. Yeah, Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coleman. Yeah, and they, it was amazing. It was really, really, really good fun. But um, I don't think I can talk about anything else. Okay, okay. And when when's that Doctor Who gonna be gonna be on? I think they start in the autumn, I think. I think they start in the autumn. I think I'm episode five. 
So five words a day. I can imagine it's a very magical, um, yeah, magical program to, to be on in terms of. Did you were you you or were you something else? <laughs> I was something else. Or were you something? Something, uh, something mystical and <laughs> quite cool. No, she was a wicked character. Wicked character. But you had your own face. You didn't have like a. Oh well, you have to wait and see. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Watch, watch this space. Did people watch this room. space? Did you have yes. a face in Doctor Who? <laughs> Um, Pippa, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And you. Have you enjoyed it? Have I enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm worried that I've been rambling a bit because it's live. You haven't, and stuff, so. you, haven't, you haven't been rambling at all. That could have been really awkward if I'd have gone, I hope you enjoyed it. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Pippa, if people do want to find out about this, uh, this, this screen work that you that you can't talk about at the moment, what's the best way to, to find you? Are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter, yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your Twitter name? At P. Bennett Warner. At I'm also on Instagram now. Oh, this, with the same, um, with the same thing. No, my boyfriend showed me yesterday that you have to, you can. I didn't realize that you could kind of um, tweet and share, so that you can like, no, you take a picture on Instagram and you can share it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he showed me how to do that, but my Instagram is at Pippa Bennett Warner, but no hyphen or anything. Okay, so Instagram, see if I remember, Instagram is at Pippa Bennett Warner. Yeah. Twitter is at, at P. P. Bennett Warner. Yeah. In the brain, in the brain. Now, I know where you're going to be at 9 p.m. tonight. You're going to be watching The Smoke, right? I am. I am. I'm going to be tweeting live, so if anybody is online tonight, join us for our final <laughs> Smoke tweet. Okay, yeah, because there would definitely be fans of The Smoke watching this interview. So, yes, Pippa is going to be live tweeting. So if there's questions you wanted to ask today that you didn't get around to asking, um, she'll be live tweeting tonight during tonight's episode of The Smoke on Sky One. Pippa, thanks again. Um, thank you. You're welcome, my love. Thank you guys at home. Thanks again for tuning into the Cyrus Lowdown. If you want to watch more of my interviews, go to YouTube and type in Cyrus Lowdown. If you want to find me on Twitter, I'm at Cyrus Lowdown. See you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.